Hi, guys. How are you all today morning? Good morning. Today is 4th July 2023. My name is T.S.V. Raghavan. And I live in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. This is my spiritual vlog on YouTube. Hari Bol T R S V Nectar N C T T A R Nectar. In this particular vlog. In all my previous videos, we have been discussing about the knowledge and information that we have gleaned through the study of spiritual books, scriptures, contemplation on the material universe, and meditation on the spiritual universe. This particular video in this vlog is no exception to that rule. It is in fact a mere continuation of what we have been doing in all my previous videos. Kindly subscribe to this vlog and press the bell icon so that I may keep reminding you of all my previous videos and the future videos. So let us talk about the topic of today. We shall play a detour from the theory of karma that we have been discussing in the past few videos to explain the theory of karma and destiny in the life of a human living entity. Today we shall talk about a new topic. This is equally interesting. There is a saying in English and in other vernacular languages. Never ever say something that you will live to regret all your life. That means that never ever get complacent enough to drop your guard when you are speaking something. Secondly, never ever underestimate any individual human being. You never know where his or her destiny lurks and to which dizzy height that destiny will take that person. In other words, you have every right to think about yourself and about God. You have every right to feel vanity towards yourself or to criticize yourself. But you do not have any right to sneer at another individual. As they say, when you make a mistake while working with God, He is God. So even if you commit a blunder, He is ready to pardon you. Naturally, when you are working with God, you would also always be doing or saying, something 
positive. However, on the other hand, when you are working for Saturn, you will say or do something negative and the Saturn does not have the bad habit of pardoning even a slip from his servant. That is, if you make a slip of a tongue or talk something stupid or do something unexpected and negative, but you fail in it, Saturn will not pardon you. How this is possible, we will know when we talk about a couple of case histories that authenticate this particular theory. There was a very, very big and noted film producer and director in Bollywood in Bombay. His name was B. R. Chopra. At the same time, there was an extremely beautiful, talented and very, very successful superstar called Nargis. This Nargis was as beautiful as within as he was without. He was beautiful out and in, all and all. This lady had a friendship with a very famous lady who once met this film star and gave her a photograph of a rising young man who wanted to become an actor in Bollywood. This lady Nargis was on the verge of retirement by then. She, however, took this photograph from that famous lady and promised to do something for the career of this boy. She went to several people, including this Mr. B. R. Chopra. This very famous, experienced, talented and successful film producer looked at that photograph and shouted silly at this actress, Nargis. She said, you are a star because of your beauty. You are successful because of your facial looks. That is what has made you strong person. Can't you see from this photograph that this guy cannot succeed in Bollywood? He does not have the looks and probably not the talent to make it big in Bollywood film industry of Bombay, India. She said, Nargis, you should be ashamed to give me this photograph. Nargis felt frightened, but he kept quiet. Behind the back of this Mr. B. R. Chopra, he encouraged that young man to struggle in the film industry. This guy took this same advice and lo and behold, within a few years, he became a star, a living legend 
and an icon called Amitabh Bachchan. So much so that Mr. B. R. Chopra was stunned at the meteoric rise of Amitabh Bachchan and he regretted every second of his life for having said what he said, told Nargis a few years back. As they say, you cannot set back what you have already spit out. You cannot take your word back. However, Amitabh Bachchan, despite knowing what Mr. B. R. Chopra thought about him was gracious enough to do a film for the same B. R. Chopra when it was directed by B. R. Chopra's son Ravi Chopra. He shows difference in the greatness of two persons. One was successful and also arrogant, while the other was successful and also humble. This is one case history which will tell us never to be complacent and arrogant enough to open our mouth and say something negative about another individual. We hardly know ourselves what to think of others in their destiny. In the second case, there was a very successful South Indian actor. This actor had a rough appearance and he hardly looked like a chocolate hero. However, one director in Bollywood wanted to make a film with this South Indian actor. So he went to one of the top distributors, producers, etc. of Bollywood called Mr. Gulshan Rai. This Mr. Gulshan Rai was extremely successful and he was riding the top wave of success at the period when this director approached him with a proposal casting this South Indian actor. Mr. Gulshan Rai looked at the photograph of the actor and laughed at that director. He said, why do you want to cast this guy? You can cast my own driver instead because the driver looks more handsome than this actor. The director was frightened and he went to some other producer and made the film anyway. The film became a super duper hit in Bollywood, India and abroad. This Mr. Gulshan Kumar, Gulshan Rai, who was so experienced a producer and distributor, was surprised at this success. Now he wanted to eat humble pie and take back his, his own word. But the word about his insult had already reached that South Indian actor. This Mr. Gulshan Kumar decided to produce a film with the South Indian actor with his own son, Gulshan Rai's 
Even of that producer is far better looking than me. Why not cast that driver in the film as hero instead? This South Indian actor rejected the film and the name of that actor is Rajini Khan, who is considered to be an international megastar in the film industry. Similarly, in the South Indian film industry, in the late 70s and early 80s, or you may say in the mid 70s, there was a very young boy who was struggling to get roles in the Tamil or uh, South Indian films. But alas, this guy, though good looking, was extremely effeminate to look at. So much so that the other elderly people in the film industry made fun of this boy's looks. They went to the extent of saying that, my dear friend, you cannot be cast in any film because we do not want two film heroines and no hero. One hero is the one who has been selected as the heroine and the other will be you who will be selected as a hero. This boy was extremely pained at such a comment from those seniors in the film industry. Nevertheless, he decided to grin and bear it and say, okay, I'll try elsewhere. This boy was encouraged by some other people in the film industry. This boy became a superstar and one of the top actors the film industry internationally has ever produced. Today his name is Kamal Hassan, the guy who was rejected for his effeminate looks is today a romantic, an action hero and a top class actor who has done multifarious roles in at least half a dozen languages in India. These include Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi and Bengali also. Now we will talk about two persons from the spiritual angle. There was a very famous and a revered organization in West Bengal which had been founded by some of the greatest intellectuals of Bengal at that time. These people were Ms. Dr. Radha Ram Mohan Rai and Mr. Devendra Nath Tagore, who was either the father or the elder brother of none other than Dr. Ravindra Nath Tagore. The organization which these two people along with other intellectuals had founded was called Brahma Samaj. This Brahma Samaj 
boasted of membership of the bhadra lok in bengali and elite in english of west bengal and india only the top not from the echelon were members of this brahma samaj one day a very young boy who was hardly in his 20s approached the headquarters of brahma samaj he was a rustic with an unshaven face and shabby clothes he approached the watchman of the headquarters of brahma samaj and said i want to go inside the tall well built watchman stopped this rustic and asked him sarcastically for what this boy said i want to become a member of this organization the watchman laughed and sneered and jeered at this rustic he said why don't you look at your face in the mirror and find out whether you can be a pun in this brahma samaj you will not even enter the gate of the headquarters of brahma samaj please leave this boy felt very slighted but he walked away distressed and disgusted only to become swami ram krishna paramhansa in later years this watchman and the big big high brown tall nosed people from brahma samaj would have regretted the day when they had sneered at this boy but alas they could not take their words back similarly there was one another young man who climbed up and down the stairs of various offices and companies in kolkata and west bengal for a job as a clerk in every interview that he attended he was laughed at and rejected by the interviewers saying you neither have the looks nor the talent or the intelligence or educator education to become even a clerk in our esteemed office so much so that after repeated rejections of this type this boy tried to commit suicide but he was stopped at the 11th hour by his own friend who told him to hang on later this boy who stayed and waited patiently got his reward some south indian rich financiers sent this boy to none no other place than chicago in america to attend a spiritual and a religious conference this boy attended that conference and came back from america to india as none other than swami vivekananda this boy had attended his interviews for a clerk's job as 
Mr. Narendra Ghosh, but he came back to India as Swami Vivekananda. It is certain that all those who had once jeered and sneered at this boy must have regretted the moment they had been acting so complacently and arrogantly to the young man. But they could not speak their own words. They regretted this all their life for calling a, such a intellectual and spiritually inclined person as a fool. This is what tells us that even though we may not think high of a person, we must never be arrogant enough to divulge our own opinion in public, especially in words. Words hurt more than swords. A sword's wound will heal one day or the other, but a wound made by a word will seldom heal. A knot appears where that wound once appeared in the sight of that person, and it makes this wounded person never forget those who wounded him with their words. We must all take a leaf out of this knowledge or this book of experiences of varied films and spiritual personalities who went through such interest in life only to reach dizzy heights both materialistically and spiritually later on. We must take a lesson from such incidents and be careful when we open our mouth in front of others because we must not do anything in our arrogance that we will have to live to regret later all our life but we can do nothing about it then. We should never ever drop our guard and say something which is offhand, sadistic, insulting, or arrogant in life to others. This is one lesson that tells us to improve our own prarabdha karma, sanchit karma, Yamana karma and agami karma. If we make such mistakes, they will have a negative impact on our own psyche and karma. We are here with an aim to ultimately get self-realized 